So there's been this thing with regulators asking you about audit culture reports and actually I'm doing the rounds talking to you know, bankers and fund managers and others at the moment. Every single person is asking about what does a, a culture report look like, what does a culture audit look like. Uh, it's my privilege to you know, share the back office uh, development of these new measurement tools with people and to put together reports on what best practice is. Um, in the book, I talk about a lot of this work in progress, and even though it's a new thing this year, um, we won't see it till later in, in 2017-18 as a regular practice. Um, what I do have is plenty of access to the work in progress that's going on in the organisation. So I write about this and I give you some pointers for what best practice will be in culture measurement. So a lot of people think that this topic, you know, it's called conduct risk, there's a special regulator for it, it must be a specialist thing that only lawyers and compliance people can get their heads around. Actually, exactly the opposite, and what struck me as a behavioural researcher is, it's stories about people's lives, it's, you know, their ordinary experiences of engaging with each other and with customers and counterparties and so on. So what I wanted to do was assemble some very plain speaking accounts of what goes right, what goes wrong, and analyse those in terms of how the new rules apply to real human situations. It's holding up a mirror to real life, if you like, looking at real conversations and understanding from those how we change or improve behaviours to comply with the new rules.